Welcome to Sweet Beat TV. It's your hosts, Alex Schiffman and Taylor Audette, and we have a great show for you today. But first, we have to talk about what's happening, Taylor. Girl, what's happening? Well, it's official. Kylie Jenner has been named the youngest self-made billionaire at just 21 years old. And I gotta say, Taylor, that is crazy with a K. Our first show and I'm gonna cry. <laughs> 21? What the freaking heck, man? I know. I mean, right before that, who did she knock out of, you know, his throne, I guess we would say, is Mark Zuckerberg, because he had that title at age of 23. And but for those that died. don't know who Mark Zuckerberg is, you and probably Ventura. don't have <laughs> Facebook. Or but. you do, and you just didn't really care who actually, you know, started this whole thing. It was a millennial by the name of Mark Zuckerberg, people. And He's he created go. Facebook. Yes. And Kylie Jenner and the whole Kardashian empire has basically taken over the man who started Facebook, and that is crazy. To you me. know what's really funny about all of this? Because obviously, what, it's Kylie's cosmetic line that really, you know, was able to elevate her to this level to have this title and of course all the dough is that so many people are probably sharing the story on Facebook right now right. which is dethroning Mark Zuckerberg. I wonder what the algorithm if he's like mm, we're not gonna push that one to the top today. Like, I know. That is, is it trending on the side? That's kind of interesting. I don't know. That is pretty ironic. It we is. have to check that after the show because that would be really weird and kind of sad. Poor Mark Zuckerberg. It is but it's called creative destructive destruction. Excuse me baby. It's like the one term I remember from one of my econ classes. <laughs> I got a C in it so it's okay that I don't exactly remember. But no it is crazy. I mean what? She's 21 years old. She obviously partnered with Ulta Beauty and that's really what elevated her brand to the next level. Right. So what? She's partnered with them for how long now? It's been. So she for three years she had it just online right. and in some pop-up shops and then she had an exclusive deal with Ulta mm -hmm. and in the year she made the exclusive deal with Ulta. Is her revenue went up 9% and she made an estimated $360 million. So now what her net worth they're saying is a billion or is 900 One billion. million? Yeah, she billion. officially became a billionaire. <laughs> now there's this same debate whether Kylie is really a self-made billionaire or, you know, the Kardashian platform has brought her to this wow. kind of billionaire, billionaire status. It's so like, I want to know, Taylor, what do you think? I mean, honey, you're born into royalty. I mean, now you're just wearing the crown. Well, you've actually kind of dethroned a lot of those before you. But I think it's also the last kid syndrome. They are like not syndrome, but they get to learn from all of those before them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, her social footprint is huge at what? 120 something or other yeah. million followers. So she already had such like a way to market herself and her now product out there. So do I think she's what? What do we say? She's like, because she's a part of the Kardashians this happened? Of course, because she's a part of the Kardashians this happened. Right. You know, I, I feel, I have mixed feelings about this because I do agree that this Kardashian platform kind of gave her, you know, the food oh, yeah. to do this and the life and, you know, the resources and all of that. Yes. But I also think that, you know, her own kind of fame through her own social media platform, mm -hmm. which, you know, they are individuals, even though we put them in one family, we, mm -hmm. they are each individuals. I mean, she does half her marketing through her social media. No, Ulta didn't have to put one marketing dollar into no. any of her lipstick. She shows campaigns. her new colors. I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you all follow Kylie Jenner because we all do. Swatches. And yes. yeah, she so shows her swatches on her arms. I mean, she shows each color, each palette, like you literally have to go nowhere but her Instagram story and All see, I see to find with it. with those swatches now is green and it's money. I don't <laughs> even know what colors they are. And honestly, I've never bought a lip kit before. Not for a lack of wanting I to, have. for a lack of, they sell out. How I did know. you get one? So I bought it like right when it came out. Um, ah, smart. And you know, I love the color. She has great colors. Mm -hmm. I bought like a, one of the nude palettes. Mm -hmm. um, I forgot the name of it, but I loved it. Um, my only complaint with it was that my lips were a little dry with it. Like it would, I, I bought the matte. I shouldn't have bought the matte. It could be mine, it could be a personal thing, but um, I wasn't a huge fan, but I know that like her highlighter is amazing. Yeah. And I know obviously the lip kits are, brought her to a billionaire. <laughs> so she's still well, I mean, laughing I all the way to the bank. No, she doesn't have to go to the bank. Yeah, Someone true. else is going to that bank while she lays in bed laughing as that person walks all the way to the bank. Um, but anyways. Lost my train of thought. Oh, it said, I think they asked in the Forbes article, because this was released on Forbes, she's on the cover of Forbes uh, right now, is that, what are you gonna do? I mean, you're a billionaire. Her answer differed from what mine would be, and that she's gonna keep expanding the empire, add, you know, eyeshadows, I think, with Ulta, and also some setting powder. Right. So it's like, what would you do? I wouldn't do that. I would literally setting, I would just jet set everywhere and anywhere. 
other than release more. I mean, but she, Kylie is known, she's one of the Kardashians that, she's not a big partier, she like really, really is a homebody, and so like, working is her passion. That's true. So I think, you know, she deserves it, and good for her, I mean, at least she's doing something productive in beauty and, and fashion, which is kind of how they rose to fame through their fashion That's and true. beauty kind of um, inspiration and... Yeah, I mean, sorry, I'm just thinking of something right now. But I think of all things she could buy that are totally outside of the realm of like what maybe their forte would be. Like she could afford to go around the moon because it right. cost around $80 million. Yeah. So we will be sticking here on earth with all us mere mortals. But Kylie could go up and around the moon if she so wanted to. She could buy a baseball team, she could buy an island, she could buy a couple of the basketball teams. Like, girlfriend, if she wants to expand, she can do so. She can. She, she can, she and my wants. favorite part about this was Kylie's quote. She said, I didn't expect anything. I did not foresee the future, but the recognition feels good. That's a nice pat on the back. <laughs> it's a nice pat on the back. That's a nice check, Kylie. That's a nice <laughs> massage from the best masseuse there could possibly be in this entire I world know. on the back, let me tell it's you. It's amazing, but congratulations to Kylie. Yep. You get it, girl. Yeah. Send us some free lip kits because you have so much money now. We'll but you don't need marketing, so you're not going to do it. And like, hey, touche, girl. I, I love it. Ugh. But um, next up, Taylor, we have to talk about what are something about? pretty nostalgic. The Little Mermaid. Say no more. Yes, it's the 30th anniversary of The Little Mermaid. Mm -hmm. And um, we had the most fun. Disney invited us to basically take mermaid school okay. and transform ourselves into Ariel herself. Um, we had makeup done, we had the fins put on. Um, I had a chance to do all of this, so why don't you take a look at the clip now. Hey everyone, Alex Schiffman here, and in honor of the 30th anniversary of The Little Mermaid, guess what? Disney has invited us to mermaid school. That's right, we're gonna all transform into mermaids, tail, makeup, and all, so stay with us to see the whole transformation under the sea. Hard, let me tell you. <laughs> but thank you again to Disney for inviting us to Mermaid School. We had so much fun. And uh, we'll see you under the sea. Oh my God. Wasn't that fun? I just want to see some of the outtakes that didn't make that because I just feel like there might be some that the people should see, Alex. I mean, let me just tell you, being a mermaid is not easy. No. I have a lot of respect for them because all it is is your core and mm -hmm. you can't bend your legs. So the motion is pretty intense. What was that motion? And I it's hard. It I mean, that time. underwater footage, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. It was awful, but so. it was so much fun. And um, what are some of your favorite Little Mermaid memories? I love flounder. I had a goldfish that... I don't know, his lifespan was not at 30 years as long as this movie, let me tell you that right now. But I named him Flounder because obviously after the fish Flounder. And yeah, that's just like far as I can date back my memory to The Little Mermaid. I don't ever recall like wanting to be one or anything of that nature. I mean, Ariel's hair, part of your world. I mean, I mean yeah, I clearly got hair extensions, but I got to an age where I had to cut them to this length at this point. So I love that. But thanks again to Disney for inviting us. We had a blast. Oh, goodness. Well, you know what, Alex? It is Tuesday, and I'm usually wide awake, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, the whole thing. But I'm a little bit tired because not only do we have The Bachelors on Monday night, which goes for, like, hours upon hours upon hours, <laughs> but also, you know what came back last Monday? 
I may know. Shadow Hunters yeah. is back. So yes, it premiered the season premiere of the season finale. Let's see the past Monday, and we also just had an episode on last night. So your girl is running on very very little sleep. But you know what? The hunt must continue. That's the right. final hunt. We are upon it right now. I'm I'm here for it. Look, I know it's hunting season. Whether we're on the Bachelor, whether we're on Shadow Hunters, <laughs> I'm just hunting. All right. So what does a good hunt huntsman huntswoman do? What Taylor? They bring in the alpha female people. That's what they do because coming up, I'm actually going to be talking to Kat McNamara all about, you know, her time as she's played Clary, which everyone has, you know, really come to love, and also what she's got going on next and what we can expect from these next few episodes. So. Very, very exciting, but don't go anywhere. Nope. Coming up, we have Kat, and that's it for what's happening today. Coming up, I'm sitting down with my girl Kat McNamara, and we're talking all about the final season of Shadowhunters. Welcome back to Sweet Me TV. I am hanging out with Kat McNamara, who currently stars as Clary Frey in Freeform Shadowhunters. Um, let's see, the mid-season finale mm -hmm. was Clary die. I'm dead. Right? I spoiler. mean, like spoiler alert. <laughs> like, if you haven't caught up, well, we just caught you up. So yeah. there's this huge explosion, yeah. and your character seems to be dead. But you will be in the next 12 episodes. I am in the next 12 episodes. It's sort of this, you know, irony of you, you can't win in the shadow world, which we always talk about. Whenever anything's happy yes. in the shadow world, we always go, wait a second, what's happening? Because it's going to be unhappy within two episodes. Always. Something's going to happen. Kind of like life, right? Kind of like life. Like, it's so good, so good. And then, and then cycle. it's all yeah. cyclical. Exactly. But, you know, Clary went through all of this. She tried to save Jace. She got arrested. She went through a trial, which she made it. She narrowly escaped. She narrowly escaped being executed. She narrowly escaped all these things. She made it all the way through Lilith carving a yep. rune into her chest only to explode because of the du the dual reaction of Lilith's magic versus the mark of Cain on Simon's forehead. Um, but what's really neat about the beginning of this season is you get to see all of these characters without Clary, which we've never seen. You get to see Jace and Simon and Luke particularly dealing yeah, with her true. loss. Right. Because they, they all truly believe that she's dead, and right. whatever state she's in, that's what they believe. And Simon, in particular, thinks it's his fault, right? Because of his mark of Cain. That's how it ended, and he he like, goes, "I, I killed, killed her." Right. And so that's devastating for all of yeah. these characters. And it, it's a very interesting way to see how they all deal with it differently. And and even you know it affects Alec and Izzy too. It affects everyone. What I loved about Clary's journey this season is that she will never be the same. That's mm -hmm. the one thing, is after this explosion, none of the characters right. are ever the of same. Not. But Clary in particular is forever changed and will never be the person that she was before. Okay, well piggybacking off that a little bit, yeah. how will you, as Kat, never be the same again after having you know been Clary for yeah. so long? Because it is the end of the season. It is, and what's interesting about that, interesting that you asked that, is I had a chance to really think about that mm -hmm. when we went back to shoot our series finale right. episodes. You know, we had that we were so fortunate to be able to go back and shoot two episodes yeah. to sort of wrap everything up and, and give the show the ending it deserves. And it really caused all of us to sit there and, and look at our journey and look at the last, mm -hmm. you know, four years almost. I was 19 when I started the show. Just I'm now in my mid-20s. Yeah. yeah, which is a big difference. People may not understand that difference. span between 19 and 20. There's a lot of growing. It's a very that. transitional time right. in your life. And, and I look back at the person I was before and the person I am now, and yeah. I don't even recognize that right. girl in the best way. Right, of course. You know, being surrounded by, we had such a family on the Shadowhunters mm -hmm. set between the cast, the crew, the creatives, the writers, producers, everyone, and, and the everyone fandom that was, too. and the fandom, Insane. everyone that yes. was brought into the show created a family. Right. And I, I just count my lucky stars every day that I was surrounded by people that are not only amazing at what they do, but also creative uh -huh. in that, right. and just wonderful human beings. You know, every day on the set, I've never been on a set like Shadowhunters, in yeah. the sense that everybody is really genuinely happy to spend time right. together and to be there every day. And there were, we were all constantly pushing each other and ourselves to, to improve and to make yeah, the show yeah. better and to make it the best it could possibly be. And I be. think the fans that were real true fans saw that. They saw they development that. even yeah. you know, in your acting and whatnot and actually got to grow with you, which exactly. I think is really cool. So let's say, let's just hypothetically say out there, throw it out there now with things like Netflix and whatever, you know, streaming right. services. Right. We've seen it happen with Gilmore Girls. There uh -huh. was a revival. Yeah. Uh, would you be open to 100%. a revival of Shadowhunters? Oh Hunters? my God, yes. yes. Okay. I would go back with those folks 
any anytime. day, anytime. Call me up, I will be there. Okay, well, I'm speaking it into existence <laughs> for all the fans out there. Like, do it with me. Maybe one day, if the yeah. timing's right, it'll happen. Honestly, I would love nothing yeah. more because, you know, you, th you always think about that. When you spend so much time with a character and you, you, you know, I've spent four to five years playing right. Clary and, uh, you always wonder, you know, where are they going to be in 10 years? Right. Where are they going to be in 15 years? What's going to happen once all of this is done? And, you know, we, we saw a lot of little bits of things. Mm -hmm. Is Lilith actually gone? Jonathan's right. arm shot out of the casket. Are there repercussions from Simon's Mark of Cain? Mm -hmm. How is Jace going to be? Because we only saw Jace unpossessed right. for about a minute. If all those things can happen. Yeah then a revival for sure could possibly well, happen exactly. one day. All right, thank you so much, Kat. We will definitely, you gotta really come back. Anytime. We'll catch up after the season finale and we'll uh, see what happens. Sounds we'll discuss good. discuss it then. All Absolutely. right, thanks everyone for joining. We'll see you all next time, bye. Coming up, we had Lost Kings and Lauren Gray in studio for a segment we like to call Game for Anything, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to Game for Anything. I'm Alex Shipman, and joining me in studio today is Lost Kings and Lauren Gray. What's up? And as you all know, they just released their single, Anti Everything, so we're gonna play a little game called Anti Everything or Not. Okay? So I'm gonna give you a few things and you're gonna tell me, do we love this or do we not? Okay? So let's start with flossing. Love this. Oh, I think I love it. Love? Yeah. Can you do your best floss? I would, we'll do my arm would floss. disagree. Yeah, yeah. We'll do a little one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Instagram stories. Oh, oh I love it. Love oh. Instagram stories. Yeah. I'm the yeah. queen of yeah. Instagram stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you are. I yeah. <laughs> love it. My Instagram stories are like 10 years long. That's it's a, true. It's a nice cop out for stuff we don't want to post on our main feed. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Totally. <laughs> anyone watching, anyone else is watching that? <laughs> um, FaceTiming. Oh, love it. Love, love it? Yeah, I love FaceTime. Yeah. yeah? It depends yeah. with who. Yeah. Like sometimes you get a call and it's a FaceTime with someone you don't even talk to on the phone and then you hate it. Listening to Spotify. Oh, love it. Love it. Love it. Straight anti everything. Love it. Gotta love Spotify. What do you listen to on Spotify? Probably anti everything. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Probably. Good one. Okay. Um, what about leaving voicemails? No. Oh. Anti voicemails. No, I just leave a text. Yeah. It's a 20% chance. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, archiving your social media. Oh, we just did that. We did Love it. it. Love it, yeah. Yeah? It's yeah. clean now. Yeah. Clean, it's fresh, mm -hmm. brand new. 2019. Scared of that. Too. Okay. Yeah. And what about saying thank you next? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I love it. I love the song. Yeah. Great so song. So I'll say it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Mm. And what about performing at Coachella? Oh, oh that's a big move. <laughs> yes. When we do it, we'll love it. But right now, salty. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. And then lastly, what about winning a Grammy? Oh, oh that's a big yes. That's a yes. Big yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, congratulations thank on you. anti everything and all the success so far. And thanks for playing game for anything. Hey you! Yes, you watching. I know Sweepy TV is great on YouTube, but the Instagram. That is something you really need to follow. I run it and I just have to say, it's quite amazing.